a black mayor in Alabama. He wins the city, the council, and the former mayor refused to seat him, breaking the law. Let's put it up full mass. What you're looking at is current day America. Patrick Braxton ran to become the first black mayor of New Bern, Alabama in 2020. With no opponent, he ascended into the office by default. That happens. But you'd never know it. The previous mayor, Haywood Woody Stokes III, is still serving as mayor, despite the fact that he failed to submit the necessary paperwork to even run for the role. Before Braxton, the position of mayor in this town had always been passed down from white friend to white friend. Then the cogs of conspiracy, it seems, began to turn. Former members of the then majority white town council members who had also failed to file qualifying paperwork held that Braxton claims was unpublicized. Unlawful meeting to order a special election to fill their own seats. Only those present at the meeting knew about the decision, Braxton said, and were, were the only ones to qualify for the offices. After they assumed office, not voted into office, after they assumed office, Braxton explained they met again without public notice and appointed Stokes as mayor after he was already the winner. At this point, Braxton was even locked out of the town hall. And in the same sense, he's been unable to discharge his duties as the official mayor of the town. Now, nearly three years into his term, Mayor Braxton is still unable to discharge the duties of his office. In a federal civil rights lawsuit, the mayor claims that since he became mayor of Newburn, Former Mayor Stokes and others have participated in an illegal conspiracy to prevent him from governing the affairs of the town simply because of his race. That conspiracy, Braxton argues, violates federal law and the US Constitution's equal protection clause. Let me say this before I go to the next point. Right there gives the DOJ's Department of Civil Rights the ability to investigate that part right there. Because you now have a question of significant constitutional origin. That is what's necessary for the federal government to get involved. You now have it. He's made the case clear for you and even filed the suit. In their response to the lawsuit, Stokes and the purported members of the town council deny any wrongdoing. Braxton, Mayor Braxton and the members of the town council, the defendants claim, will be unable to prove a conspiracy took place. <laughs> will be unable to prove a conspiracy took place, will be unable to prove a conspiracy took place. The defendants too claim immunity from the suit, arguing that the law in situations like this was not clearly established. <laughs> well, thankfully, your misunderstanding of the law does not give you immunity from it. Yes. You all have basically admitted to it, you just don't know it. An attorney is going to help you see the light real soon. Max thoughts here. Well, according to Candace Owens, the Jim Crow <laughs> doesn't exist. Right. So I don't know what the problem is. I mean, I don't see how you can be any clearer that Republicans don't care about democracy. They would rather dissolve democracy entirely than have to look up to a black man who's in a position of public office. And they're saying very clearly not we didn't do it. They're saying you're not gonna prove it because we have this big white wall of silence as we've seen in courtrooms in the South for decades. And the sad thing is at the local level, they're probably right. And this is another example where the DOJ created the Civil Rights Department for this specific purpose. Right. This may be the most transparent case I have ever seen. And I really hope they get involved. Yeah, they have to get involved. I know they have their hands full. I know they are actually being more aggressive now than they have been in many years. Uh, budget has to get uh, bigger in order for them to continue the good work of providing what's needed to local communities. We'll bring you updates as they come.